Hi, it's Danny Boris again. As you know by now, I collect my soldiers. And this video represents number 19 in my collection. If you enjoy these videos, please subscribe. It can be very motivating. The figures can be made available for sale and I can be reached at danielboris at yahoo.ca. This first grouping, grouping shows two sets. Um, the first would be the changing of the guard, a massive two-tier box set of 85 pieces showing the pageantry of the changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace. The figures are all antique holocaust William Brins. In the same grouping we see the state coach. I bought this coach from Mr Dillon at his antique store in Toronto. Also, I bought all of the Holocaust cavalry, beef eaters in attendance. A huge purchase for me in 1992, but I always wanted them since I was a kid. These sets were produced for the Queen's coronation in 1952. Many of the household cavalry are much older than 1952. All are William Britton's antiques, with the exception of four lifeguards from a Britain's limited edition set. In this grouping, there is one stagecoach with an eight-horse team, 25-foot figures, and 43 mounted figures. Here we see two rare sets of William Britton's Holocaust in their boxes. The first set is the Italian Versegliari, uh, just a lovely set of figures. And next to them you see uh, a set of six Russian infantry, again Holocaust, at the trail. The next grouping shows Donald Featherstone's French Napoleonics, the se second grouping of this type shown so far in my collection. Here we see the Emperor and his staff. He's protected by dismounted dragoons, marines and mamelukes. There are 280 figures in this grouping, 91 mounted figures and 9 guns. The manufacturers include Higgins, Hinchcliffe, Garrison, some cavalry, I don't know who the manufacturers are. A lot of them are very oldest of minifigs, uh, as indeed are the Lancers and the Mamelukes. The next grouping shows Blenheim on parade. I'm very fond of the Blenheim model toy soldiers and this grouping is quite startling. Inside the entire group there it's separated into four components. There are lancers, hussars, a company of archers, beef eaters, all the Queen's men for a total of 30 figures. There are grenadier guards uh, which consists of 12 guards and the colour party in a 12-piece band. And there are two line infantry uh, units with their colours. Total figures in this grouping, 72 foot figures. The next group shows an impromptu inspection by General Patton. A US Sherman tank at rest is surprised by the arrival of General Patton with his aide-de-camp. They snap to attention and after inspection get a dose of Patton-style motivation. The scenic accessory is a drinking well with bucket 
the tankers would just love it if the bucket turned out to be filled with ice cold Budweiser. All the pieces are by King and Country, one tank, one scenic display and four foot figures. This next set shows the Brits in South Africa. The group represents two wars in Africa, the Zulu War and the Boer War. All sets are by Blenheim Miniatures with the exception of the red coats at the Present Arms which are from Marlborough. It's understandable that this would never be noticed as both lines were produced by the Scrobies. The total numbers of figures in this grouping, 46 foot and 6 mounted. This next grouping shows Tony Bath's figures. I purchased this, purchased this grouping from Tony Bath almost half a century ago. Tony, like Donald Featherstone, was a pioneer of the hobby. He was forever writing articles on his fictitious Hyboria campaigns, which were published in the Society of Ancient Slingshot magazine. Tony used medieval flats, two-dimensional figures in 40mm scale, which he cast and painted himself. He wanted to sell some of his collection and advertise them in Slingshot and thus they made their way into my collection. The grouping consists of 23 mounted figures and 115 foot. The next grouping shows the Indian Mutiny, both cavalry and infantry. This set depicts both British infantry and cavalry dressed for the warm weather at the time of the Indian Mutiny. There are also six sepoys who could as easily depict mutineers. Produced by Marlborough, the group consists of 18 foot figures and four mounted. This next grouping shows the Imperial Romans. The little set piece has figures from three manufacturers. Four from Conte, one from King and Country and one from Imre Risley, which I painted. The little vignette commemorates the Roman defeat, defeat in Tudenburg Forest, Germany. The loss of Roman life is said to have been as high as 20,000. Three legions and their auxiliaries led by Varus were annihilated by the German tribes led by Arminius. The weather was dreadful. Torrential rainfall. The Roman column was disorganised, stretching out for 20 kilometres. The assault in the woods lasted for two days and nights. There was an overnight fortified camp stop and later a night march. The attacks from ambush were relentless and finally the attackers surrounded the entire Roman army. This next group depicts the raid on St Francis by Rogers Rangers. The native Indians who lived in St Francis were alleged to have raided many British settlements creating mayhem, torture and murder. Rogers Rangers were ordered to destroy the village which was largely cottage-like western homes like those lived in by settlers. Rogers and his men used seven whale boats to cross the lakes to achieve the advantage of surprise. They were ordered to kill no women or children. This order was ignored 
and they burned the village to the ground. The whale boats were captured and thus cutting off Roger's retreat. So they trekked 200 miles overland, pursued by woodland Indians at every step. They were caught, tortured, scalped, and up to 140 rangers lost their lives. It was thought that Rogers himself died, but he lived to create mayhem another day. Food was so scarce that it is said that the rangers resorted to cannibalism during the retreat. The figures of John Jenkins and frontline miniatures. The group has six crew for the whaler and 21 foot.